everyone. Um, it's been quite a while since I have uploaded a podcast. I had intended to probably a month to two months ago and then uh, my life kind of just changed and it's been super busy so all really good things. Um, I recently got engaged last month in February and um, I wasn't expecting like our social life to get so busy but it did and um, it's been really wonderful. It's good things not um, anything bad but it's kind of taken priority over um, knitting and filming and that's okay. So, but here I am today uh, with a podcast episode. If you have never watched any of these videos, uh, my name is Dakota and um, knitting is something that brings me a lot of joy. Um, so I kind of just sit here and talk about things that I've knitted and um, things I'm working on and yarn. Uh, and I have quite a lot of finished objects that I have stockpiled since the last video. So that's exciting. Um, so I'll go over all that and then I have some um, new things too. But really like I've just been in the mood to like get all my winter stuff off of my needles. Um, it's March. It's Today is March 26th. And it's like slowly warming up here. I live in New Jersey. And yeah, it's slowly warming up. Um, it's been like in the 50s with some colder days. So um, even today, like being in my house, like I'm kind of hot. That's why I'm wearing um, this like tank top kind of thing. I did not knit this, but it was too hot to wear one of my sweaters. So um, yeah, uh, I kind of just want to purge my needles and get started on like more summery things. But um, yeah, I think that's it um but yeah if you're new here welcome um if you feel inclined please subscribe and leave a comment or a like and um yeah i'd love to chat in the comments if you feel like it so yeah um so first we'll start with finished objects i have quite a few of them um so first we can talk about um my last long pullover. So this was a sweater that I started back like last fall. It was kind of like an impulse cast on. I saw the pattern on Ravelry and I really liked it. I loved like the long funnel neck and um, the contiguous style of knitting. Um, but I had never done half fisherman's rib before. So, um, but I was like really excited. I'm like, great, something new. It'll like be super involved and um, I'm super excited. So I bought the yarn and it got came in the mail and I immediately cast it on in the fall. And I was making like pretty good progress, but then I got stuck after I knit one of the sleeves because the one sleeve was just like dragging. And um, with Half Fisherman's Rib, like it kind of uh, bunches up before it's blocked so the garment like just looked small and I was just like losing steam as it kept going so let me show you my last long pullover um I don't know if I can get it all on the camera but I'll insert a video so here she is all over half fisherman's rib um so yeah, my favorite parts of this sweater are definitely the funnel neck and then also the contiguous style knitting for the shoulders and the sleeves. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but there it is. I love it. It sits so nicely on the shoulders. It slouches so nicely. Um, there was no like picking anything up. You know, the sleeves were just put on hold. So let me give you some stats of this pattern. So this is the Last Song Pullover by uh, Albiona McLaughlin. I might be saying that incorrectly and I apologize. Um, so this is a sweater. Um, it's knit with DK weight yarn, um, needle size 4.5 millimeters, which I did use. I didn't um, alter that at all. 
and um, yeah, it's all over Half Fisherman's Rib. The yarn I ended up using was West Yorkshire Spinners BFL yarn in this like forest green color. Um, yeah, I love the color. I think it suits me very well, my fair skin. I love this sweater. This is probably one of my most worn sweaters, at least once I finished it. So I started this in the fall and I didn't end up finishing it until probably February or end of January, I think. Um, like I said, I just got stuck on this sleeve and I ended up not finishing that second sleeve. Like I kind of had to put myself in the right mindset, like, okay, I'm just gonna bang out this sleeve and I'll be able to wear this sweater. And um, finally, I made the choice to do that, and once it was off the needles and blocked, I like fell in love with it. The BFL yarn, I've never knit with it before, and it's so like soft and squishy. Um, I think it fares really well with the Half Fisherman's Rib because the Half Fisherman's Rib is already quite like um, squishy. So yeah, I love the combination with the yarn and the Half Fisherman's Rib. I initially was a little worried because as I was knitting it, it like didn't look like I thought it was gonna look. So I would see like finished object photos of half fisherman's ribbed sweaters or cardigans and I was like, mine just looks like ribbing. Like <laughs> I don't see the vision. Um, but then once I blocked it, I got like that those very nice spaced out um, knit stitches and purl stitches. So, yeah, I think I knit this in the size two. It's quite slouchy, as you'll see in the video. It's pretty slouchy, but it's nothing that um, drives me crazy. So, overall, I really enjoyed knitting this. Um, even though I did get hung up on that second sleeve, the Half Fisherman's Rib was, like, something that I used to be really afraid of. And once I knitted it, I was like, oh, this is just like ribbing with like one extra thing that I have to do that or like keep in mind. So it really wasn't bad and I enjoyed it um, up until that second sleeve. And then, yeah, once it was done, like, like I said, this is one of my favorite sweaters. Sometimes I'll wear the funnel neck all the way up or sometimes I'll tuck it in like this. something like that um and yeah i love it it's pretty warm i finally finished last long pullover we'll go to my next one so this is my oslo hat mohair edition i'm obsessed with this um this is another one like as soon as i got done knitting it i wore it all the time since it's a little warmer i haven't needed it really but i'll just put it on I was very unsure about the color at first. I was like, I don't know if this washes me out, but honestly, I don't even care if it does because it's really cute. <laughs> um, I love, love, love the speckles. I think why I chose to get, I remember I went to the yarn store and I had just gotten done watching like one of um, Nee Knit's podcasts and she was knitting a speckly sweater. And I'm really not someone that likes speckles. I'm more like, a like tonal type of person but I don't know I just like fell in love and I was like I want like a pink speckly sweater also pink is something that I've recently grown to love like I used to not like pink but now for some reason I'm really into it um so yeah I went with these two yarns um I went with, it was, um, the Merino strand was a fingering weight, it was by La Bien Ami, and it was just like a, the speckly like pink and purple, there's some yellows in it, I don't think I have any extra, if I do it's in my bin of extras, but it's this really beautiful speckly yarn, but with like a pink creamy base, and then for the mohair, oh wait I lied, I'm so sorry, it's opposite. The um, mohair was La Bien Ami, and that was just like a kind of like a strawberry pink mauve mohair. 
um, that really like gave this all over pink hue to it. The other yarn, the merino yarn that is the speckly base is um, by this brand called Tre Liz. Uh, I think it's either French or from Greece. Um, but I got it at my local yarn store and I like fell in love as soon as I saw it. So yeah, it's full of like these yellow, purple, pink speckles, even like some oranges and browns, but the overall color was pink, like a pinky cream color. It was definitely lighter than the mohair, but in combination, this is what it made. I was worried because I remember thinking like the mohair was gonna scratch me so bad, but um, it doesn't, I it does not bother me at all. So I was very pleasantly surprised by that. I feel like mohair, especially on my forehead, can itch a lot and same like around my neck, but this does not at all and it's very comfortable and very, very warm. So I'm very happy with this. Um, in terms of the pattern, the Oslo hat was my first time. Yeah, it was my first time knitting an Oslo hat. I knit the size adult small and in the mohair edition. So yeah, um, I really like the pattern. I'll, I'll unfold it for you. This is what it looks like. And overall it was a really simple pattern. Um, I really don't have much to say about it. This was my first time doing like this double brim type of thing and I think um, where you like fold it down and then you turn your work and um, it can get a little confusing but no issues whatsoever and I 1000% plan to knit these in the future again. So yeah this is my Oslo hat mohair edition. Um, speckly version. <laughs> talk about my province pullover first and then we'll talk about my fail, my knitting fail. I'm very sad, um, but we'll talk about it at the end. So my most recent cast off has been my province sweater by Sorella. So this is a pattern by Sorella Yarn. Um, it is a pullover or a sweater. It's knit with fingering weight yarn or two lace weight yarns held together. I went with the recommended yarn, which is her base of Surrey. I have always wanted to knit with Surrey, like so bad. And I finally did and I absolutely love it. Um, calls for 4.5 millimeter needles and I'm pretty sure I knit the size small. So let me show you. This is my province sweater. Don't mind the ends that need to be woven in up there. I've worn this many times and still have not knit, uh, weaved them in. So this is my province sweater. You can see how beautiful this Surrey lace is. Again, this was my first time knitting with Surrey lace and it's so soft and fluffy. This does not bother my skin at all. Not the same way that mohair does. I will say I like the look of mohair more when it's like combined with the, like other strands of yarn, but um, it's just like not as fluffy, I guess. But um, to have like an all over Surrey sweater is wonderful. I've gotten many compliments on this sweater. Um, I think it suits my skin tone and my just like overall features very well. Um, some notes about this pattern, uh, it's a circular yoke, which I don't know if I've ever knit a circular yoke before, I'll be honest. I cannot remember in the history of all my knitting, but um, it's a circular yoke and you're basically doing like these increases for the whole yoke and eventually you split for sleeves and at the body and then pick back up for sleeves. Um, the f it's finished with this I-cord edging, which I love. Um, and yeah, I knit this with just two strands of Surrey lace and I only, I used four skeins. So um, 
I was a little worried at the end that I was running out of yarn so I kind of shortened the sleeves a bit and I shortened the body but the body ended up being like perfect size for me um, and I still ended up with some yarn left so it, I was playing yarn chicken for nothing but it's okay. <laughs> I've very much enjoyed wearing this sweater. I would knit it again. Um, I don't know if I would knit it again with Surrey because I don't know I just like I don't really wear a lot of fluffy clothes <laughs> but um, this is an exception and I actually like I wanted to knit this for my engagement photo shoot um, this was what came to mind for some reason when I was thinking about it because both Austin and I my fiance we both really love springtime and the cherry blossom flowers and this is what that reminded me of so Next weekend we're going to Washington DC to take engagement photos with our friends and um, I'm envisioning being under the cherry blossom trees with this on and maybe like a skirt or something. I think that would be really cute. But we'll see. That was the original vision for this sweater but um, I've been wearing it ever since it was blocked so hopefully I don't get anything on it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this. I would highly recommend the Surrey base from Sorella. I find that in my local yarn stores, it's hard to come by. Like Surrey is just hard to find. But, um, and I was like a little skeptical because I couldn't touch it. I couldn't feel it. How would I know if like I would like it or if it would be scratchy? But um, no, it was, it's wonderful. So definitely want to buy more Surrey from her in the future. I just don't know like what I'll make with it because yeah I don't want like a bunch of fluffy clothes and that's kind of where I went with this and my other finished object that I really don't like so I'm glad that I like this one and um this was a win so yeah I very much love this and it's going to be perfect for um cool spring days and even in the beginning of summer or even summer nights I think so yeah that's my province pullover to my sad sad knitted cardigan i want to say it's not it's not the pattern and it's not the yarn it's just how it fits me that i don't love so here she is um i'll back up this is my uh Mongensen cardigan um, I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's a pattern by uh, Wolf Folk Designs, and Wolf Folk is the yarn that I used for this cardigan as well. So here it is. I'll show you the back because it's a little easier to see all the beautiful cables. It's very long. Here are the sleeves. Very nice white, um, or it's more like a cream off-white color it's a mix of wool and mohair together so it's not a surrey but it, to me it kind of like gives off that vibe so this is an all over cabled sweater with well a cardigan with a double knit button band also it's bottom up it's my first time ever doing bottom up it was it got to a point where i was like jesus take the wheel i don't know what i'm doing but i'm just gonna follow this pattern and see what happens um, and it was stressing me out because, you know, it, the yarn was not um, very affordable. It's, you know, high quality, expensive yarn. So um, I was getting a little nervous, but I had high hopes because once I joined um, the front shoulder with the front panel, it looked great. I was like, this is wonderful. But for some reason, I think it's because my armholes are just so small that my sleeves just like don't fit right and then once it's on like this the back just like flares out and it doesn't look great so i'll try it on um i'll try not to die sweating um also the sleeves ended up being a little big like at the end or a little long i mean so here she is um as you can see the sleeves are just very long. Um, I guess I could fold them up. This thing is very warm. 
my plan for this is to buy buttons for the button band and then just wear this in like a snow blizzard <laughs> whenever it's like blizzarding outside because it's so warm um the other thing is like it's okay when i'm not wearing anything long sleeved like this looks okay um but whenever like i have a long sleeve on it just like pulls and it doesn't fit nicely like it doesn't sit nicely but the issue is like this is pretty itchy on my arms so i'm not really inclined to wear it with a short sleeve shirt or like a tank top um i just feel like it'd be uncomfortable and it's very very warm um, i'll show you my button band so i did a double knit button band for this I followed the tutorial, like the petite knit tutorial, I'm pretty sure. This is my first time doing a double knit button band and I really love the look of it. I definitely want to incorporate it in other cardigans I make. So here's my button band. It turned out really well. At first, I had picked up my stitches and very quickly noticed like it was kind of scrunching really badly. So I was like, I must have not picked up correctly so I ripped it back and started over and now it's fine like it doesn't bunch up or flare um so yeah maybe I can show you like how it flares in the back like I can't I have to wear it like off the shoulder which kind of defeats the purpose I don't know like that's just not what I was envisioning so yeah I'm kind of sad but um, you know, I think that this will have a specific purpose at least. So, you know, on a very cold night, if I need something that's going to just keep me warm and I don't care about like how it looks, this is perfect. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I am happy that I was able to experience doing like an Oliver Cable cardigan. I did bottom up. I, um, did a double knit button band, like all really good things. I just wish that I liked how it looked maybe you're watching and you're like Dakota you're crazy like that looks really nice but it's just not what I envisioned for my own wardrobe so it is what it is um knitting sometimes is like you learn that you don't like that you learn that maybe something that you thought you would like is something that doesn't actually even like go with your wardrobe different colors and styles and things so I think it's easy to see a pattern online and be like, oh wow, I love that. I would love to make that. Um, but then when it comes to practically wearing it, it's not um, that practical. And, you know, sometimes it's okay for me. Like, um, if I really enjoyed the process of making it and trying all these new techniques, then that's what I got out of that. And that's okay. But uh, for sustainability purposes and like practicality purposes, I try not to do that because, <laughs> um, you know, yarn can get expensive and um, I want to have like a purpose in the things that I make. So that's kind of why I'm sad. But um, yeah, the pattern itself, very thorough, almost too thorough. Like there were so many instructions. And um, for me, that was a little bit overwhelming. Um, there were also parts that I kind of had to figure out on my own so although the pattern was very thorough and in-depth there were parts where I was like what does this mean it's not in the legend um I kind of just had to figure it out on my own so um overall I would not say like beginner friendly um yeah maybe save this if this is something that you like save this for like once you're a little bit more um experienced with knitting I'm starting to sweat so I'm going to take this off um, and in terms of the yarn um, the yarn is lovely it is kind of scratchy now I wish like maybe if I feel inclined to I'll rip this back and repurpose it for like an all over cable sweater maybe like the I forget which one it is exactly but the my favorite things knitwear sweater I think that would look lovely it would be so warm so maybe next winter definitely not this winter i cannot be bothered to um well we're out of winter definitely not 
this season I won't be doing that but I would really like to repurpose this yarn but I'm super proud of my cables they turned out so good so yeah um that's all I have to say about this unfortunately they don't always turn out the way we want them to for my finished objects um I have definitely been getting a lot of wear out of my um, province pullover and the last long pullover and while it was colder I was getting a lot of wear out, out of my Oslo hat so those are all wins to me and um, I'm glad to have those off of my needles. I still have one um, or two, really just one from the winter that uh, I would like to get off soon of my needles. So I guess now we'll move on to my works in progress. Okay, so um, if you've watched the last, po last podcast, you definitely would have seen this before. This is my Dorney sweater by Rebecca Klo or Crabe on Instagram. This is an all over cabled textured sweater, um, raglan. And uh, as you can see, I'm stuck on Sleeve Island. <laughs> I have finished one sleeve, but I have not gotten to my second sleeve. And um, I don't know why, I think I had like such good momentum on this and then I think I just got excited about a different sweater and I just put the sleeve on hold. Um, but yeah, I really like this pattern. I love this yarn. It's very like scrunched up right now because of all the cabling. Um, I'm very much hoping that this is going to block out nicely and fit me, not like super tight because this yarn is quite itchy. Um, I'm using La Bien Ami Cori in this beautiful deep purple color. I think the color is called Moria. I love this color so much. The camera probably isn't doing it justice because I'm facing away from the light, but, um... Yeah, I think, I don't even remember where I was last time, but I did finish off my, um, my collar. It's a, I did double folded, uh, and then I did finish my one sleeve. So yeah. I really don't have much to say about this because I haven't even knit it, anything on it, but now that I'm talking about it, maybe I'll feel like inclined to pick up that sleeve. I think it's going to stretch out pretty nicely. Like, this is very stretchy. It's just so stiff right now. I really don't know what to say about this. I think this is the front. <laughs> yeah, this is the front. Um, I'll have more to say on it once it's done. I am hoping to get it done by the end of... I mean, it's spring now, but by the end of the cold season so that I am able to wear this. I would really like to wear this. So, maybe let's aim for two weeks. Let's do two weeks. I can finish this in two weeks. Um, today is March 26th, so let's see. It would be, well, two weeks from now is April 9th. Can I finish it by the 9th? Well, we'll see. What's going on on the 9th? Nothing. So yeah, that's my goal. Finish this by April 9th. And um, I'll have more to say on it once it's done. Um, so yeah, this is my Dorney sweater by Crea Bea with La Bien Ami Cori. My next work in progress is something that I just recently casted on, like last week. Um, and it's a sweater. And although we are in springtime, I wanted to knit a sweater. I wanted like a nice lightweight sport weight sweater that I can just throw on like on a cooler summer night on a cool spring day like just something that is a little oversized that I can just throw on anytime. Um, so I chose this sweater and let me get you the information. So this is the I'm going to butcher this I'm sorry. Uh, Gessel tongue sweater. Um, I guess Gessel tongue in German means design. Um, definitely a German designer, but the pattern is translated to English. 
And this sweater is just like a basic raglan sweater. There are so many different opportunities to make it your own. Um, I love that the sweater name is called the design sweater because like she allows like freedom to add your own design elements to it. So for example, for my um, collar, I ended up doing a um, twisted rib, twisted rib collar. <laughs> uh for mine and i really like how it turned out um and then yeah you basically start with um it's knit in the round all the way there's no doing um you do knit flat at first but you like continue why can't i think i can't speak it's a raglan sweater <laughs> so you start with the back and knit back and forth and do your short rows and your increases so that's what you do and then eventually you work your way with short rows to the front and connect it and then it's just all knitting in the round so i don't have to go back later and pick up stitches for the neckband which i love i hate picking up stitches it like deters me from finishing things like i'm not looking forward to picking up the stitches for that um dorney sweater even though they're already on hold like all i have to do is slip the needle in <laughs> but I, I just do not like doing it. So the least amount of picking up stitches, the better. Um, so yeah, I, I love that you knit the, back, the neck band first and then you uh, do your raglans and you split for sleeves, but I'm still working on the yoke. So, you know, I've done my uh, short rows and it's very hard to see. It kind of looks like nothing right now, but I'll show you um, one of my raglans. I'm gonna put a stitch marker, a progress keeper, so that we can keep track of where I was when I filmed this. We'll use my cat if it will focus. I don't think it's gonna focus. But I got these um, like a year or two ago when I just started knitting and it was off Etsy. I don't know like who who the um, the seller was, but yeah. All right, so we're gonna put this in here. There we go. So yeah, we'll see how far I get. I definitely plan to knit on this right after I film this, so yeah. Um, I am knitting the size three. I'm knitting the size three, which uh, corresponds to a bust circumference of 105 centimeters so I think when I measured mine um it was like 94 I think so I think that the 105 centimeters will give plenty of positive ease and it'll be nice and comfortable um I really am enjoying the sweater I love the pattern uh, I'll pop it up on the screen I love the pattern and I feel like you could knit this with any any yarn um it does call for DK or no, it calls for sport, and because I was looking for a sport weight pattern, so I went with uh, Ultra Wool DK, which is a DK weight yarn, but I've used it in the past, and um, in my opinion, it's sport weight like. Like if I compare this to the um, to my uh, Cory, I think Cory's worsted actually, so I'm not even gonna compare them, but regardless. <laughs> I, um, I've used this yarn before and it was very lightweight and I don't know if it was just the color I used, but, um, yeah, I have not checked my gauge yet. This is just something that I cast it on and I'm like, I'm just going to do it and, you know, I think it'll be fine. I want it to be slightly oversized, so regardless, I think it'll be fine. Uh, I am knitting it on the recommended needle size, which is four millimeters. I love knitting on four millimeters. It's definitely my favorite. So yeah, more on this yarn. Um, I'm knitting it in this gray color. <clears throat> Fun fact, I used to not like gray. I was like, I'm never knitting anything gray. I don't wear anything gray. Here we are, I'm knitting a gray sweater. Um, this is a very nice like heathered gray. It's um, not dark. It's more like a light gray or a medium tone gray but there are like different um, tones in it of a lighter and darker gray. So 
I really like the heathered look. I I really don't love, I've learned just knitting with um, straight like solid color. I like to like see the variation coming to life and um, like for example with my last long pullover with that green yarn, I think that was something that kind of was like un unmotivating to me because you know I wasn't really seeing much come to life and that's something that I love about knitting. Um, I love getting to see the yarn come to life and you know be something that I can wear. So yeah, I like the heathered yarn. Overall, I am enjoying this. This yarn is pretty soft. It's a super wash yarn, so um, I have faith that it will hold up pretty well for just being like a stockinette sweater. It's a little bit scratchy, but I don't know. After blocking and soaking in the wool wash, maybe it'll soften up and it'll be all right. So I'm super excited about this. This is all I've really been knitting on. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. That's it for my works in progress. Um, I do have one acquisition I'll show you. And that is just a single skein of yarn that I don't know what I'm going to do with yet. Um, this is, um, I'm just remembering popped into my head. I never said the name of the color of the Surrey I used for my province sweater. It was in the color um, Chalet. Chalet. Um, it was in her winter tonals, so I'll just mention that. But I also got a single skein of yarn um, from Sorella. This is the Cashmere Sock. It's 80% wool, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. For um, 100 grams, you get 435 yards, and um, it's in the color Cardigan. I think this was from her Taylor Swift collection. I'm not sure. She kind of just had like a bunch of yarns on sale um, on her website, so I picked this one up. I figure it would make a really cute pair of socks, so that's my plan right now for it, or like a hat, but I think a pair of socks would be really cute, so... Yeah, we'll see. I don't plan on um, casting it on soon, but I think this summer and spring, I've learned that I really don't wear a lot of summer knits. I end up knitting them and then I really don't get a lot of use out of them. So I think just for like sustainability, um, I have a couple t-shirts that I want to knit, but um, other than that, it's really just going to be a lot of socks and I think I'll just have like at least one sweater project that I can work on, um, you know, just to have something to wear in the fall. Um, it's very tempting for me to buy yarn based on like the season that is approaching, but I've just learned that by the time I cast it on, I don't have enough time to knit it. And then I kind of miss that window where I was like feeling inspired to wear that garment so um trying to just like reframe the way i think about uh knitting and you know the wear of my knits so yeah um so far 2024 has been a really awesome year of knitting and um, i think slowly but surely i'm learning what like my style is and what i like to wear so yeah um that's all I have to share. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and um, giving the video a like if you want and definitely leave a comment. Let me know what you're knitting and just like anything. What are your plans for the spring? Um, something cool that happened this week, anything. Uh, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one.